Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In today's epistle reading, the Apostle Paul described the Christian life in this way. This is what he wrote uh, in Colossians. As God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. In today's Gospel reading, Simeon and Anna show themselves to be excellent examples of that kind of thought and that kind of speech and that kind of behavior. They are living out the Christian life described by Paul in the book of Colossians. They are putting their faith into action by their virtuous words and deeds. Simeon and Anna are by God's grace his chosen people, holy and dearly loved. And they are blessed to meet and behold a 40-day-old baby Jesus at the temple in Jerusalem. And they respond by letting the peace of Christ rule in their hearts. You know, neither of them have much time left in this world, Simeon and Anna. Anna is very old, it says in the Gospel of Luke. And when Simeon speaks of being dismissed in peace, he means death. That's the kind of dismissal that he's talking about. Yet both of them possess the peace that passes all understanding. The peace of Christ is ruling in their hearts. Simeon is not afraid of death because God has kept his promise to him, the promise that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. And Simeon holds that Messiah in his arms. He holds salvation in his arms. And Anna, she's not afraid of death either. She sees Jerusalem's redemption when she sees the baby Jesus, and she sees her redemption in that child as well. The peace of Christ rules in their hearts. Simeon and Anna are living out their faith by letting the message of Christ dwell among them richly as they teach and admonish with all wisdom. Anna spoke about the baby Jesus to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem, Luke wrote, that is, all God's Old Testament faithful people. He who has ears, let them hear to what Anna has to say about this child and the redemption of Jerusalem. And Simeon, he's in the temple courts, a very public place, praising God with what has become known to us as the Nunc Dimittis, the Song of Simeon. Mary and Joseph hear Simeon's message and they marvel at what was said about their infant son. For both Simeon and Anna, the message of Christ lives and dwells within them richly, and it bursts forth in word and song. With their godly words and actions, Simeon and Anna have clothed, clothed themselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. They show all those qualities, and they are thankful to be at church in the presence of God and in the presence of the infant Christ. And Simeon and Anna are living out the Christian life described by Paul. They are putting their faith into action by their virtuous thoughts and words and deeds. They are, by God's grace, his chosen people, holy and dearly loved. And they are blessed and rejoice to meet and behold a 40-day-old baby Jesus at the temple in Jerusalem. Now, sadly, there are many things in this world that can make us feel the opposite of the peace and joy that Simeon and Anna are living out. 
There are many things in this world that can make us feel anxious and afraid and worried and frightened and unsettled and all kinds of things like that. And we are tempted to be clothed with these distressful things instead of the peace of Christ, along with compassion and kindness and humility and gentleness and patience. And death is one of those things that can make us anxious and afraid and worried and frightened and unsettled. As death draws ever closer, we may wonder, will God keep his promise to me like he did with Simeon, the promise to depart in peace? Or remember how Simeon said to Mary, a sword will pierce your soul too. Mary would have to deal with her son's death and one day watch her firstborn die by the cruelty of crucifixion. We sometimes have to watch the ones, the, the ones we love die, and that can be unsettling. And there are many, many other kinds of tragedies and heartaches in this world that pierce our souls and seek to leave us feeling anxious and afraid and worried and frightened and unsettled. The good news for us who live in a broken and dying world is that Jesus was born in Bethlehem to be the Lord's Messiah. Even when Jesus was only 40 days old, that fact is obvious and comforting to Simeon and Anna. Jesus is the Lord's Messiah. As such, Jesus is dearly loved by his Heavenly Father and holy. Jesus is God and man knit together in one person inside the womb of Mary. Jesus is divine and human joined together in such a way that Simeon holds God in his arms. Jesus is the eternal word made flesh and dwelling among us. And as the Lord's Messiah, as God's chosen, Jesus is clothed always with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, peace, and thankfulness, and armed with and made bold by the peace that passes all understanding, Jesus faithfully, compassionately, humbly, and for the joy set before him, went to the cross and death for us and our salvation. Any hesitation about facing death is consumed by his love for you and his faithfulness to the mission his Heavenly Father has sent him on, the redemption of Anna and Simeon and Mary and Joseph and Jerusalem and the whole world. To defeat sin and death for us, he endured crucifixion and the tomb. He died as our substitute to pay for the sins of the whole world. He died faithfully compassionately, humbly, and for the joy set before him. But on Easter, Jesus rose from the dead, and therefore death has lost its sting. Because you belong to Christ, your death, like his death, is only temporary. Your flesh and blood, like his, will live again and live eternally. Because of Christ, you are dearly loved by God and holy in his sight. He is ready to lead you through every tragedy, every heartache in this world. Because of Christ, you are dearly loved by God and holy in his sight. He chose you at your baptism and gave you the gift of his Holy Spirit and made you one of his own a holy and dearly loved disciple. Through the working of his Holy Spirit, the message of Christ, the good news of Christ crucified and risen for you, dwells richly within your heart of faith. Like Simeon, you hold a miracle in your hands when you hold consecrated bread and wine. In, with, and under those simple elements is the sacramental presence of God's Son, 
the Lord's Messiah, the Savior, Jesus Christ. He is present in, with, and under the bread and wine to renew and refresh in you the gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation. Jesus died and rose again for you. When the time comes, you may depart this life in his peace. In Jesus' name, amen. In the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.